and we're going to switch from the new health trees. Brian Marker, who's from the Ministry of Forest Lands and Natural Resources, is going to be our next speaker. Brian's going to talk about two projects, and these were actually our two first projects group. Um, and uh, I know Brian will talk about the project, but just to give people a bit of an indication of how long some of these are in incubation. One of the first projects JWC ever did was on forest genomics. Um, I don't think there would have been anybody in the ministry back in 2000 who would have thought, you know, oh my God, where are these guys who live in see This is not typical to us. So you know, sometimes these things do are a long, long time in the making with a great deal of investment to get to a point where you can do a project for a couple hundred thousand dollars to, to see if it can make a difference significantly in practice. Right? Thanks, Gabe. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, uh, trees take a long time to grow as well. Um, so I'm privileged to present on behalf of uh, our colleagues and scientists who understand this uh, topic much better than I. Um, I've uh, simplified the presentation for a mixed audience um, because forestry is, is not rocket science, as uh, my professor said. It's actually much more difficult. <laughs> I was going to name, uh, title my talk, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, from the TV series Six Million Dollar Man, because, because that's what we do in tree breeding, we grow bigger trees. Um, but then I, before I put it in the slide, I just checked it online and I learned that the title was usurped by a documentary on the use of antibiotic steroids <laughs> in the United States. And I thought, well, I don't, uh, I'm not going to use that because I don't want to give the impression that we're juicing trees. <laughs> but uh, we do employ several legitimate ways of increasing the growth and health of our forests, and conventional tree breeding and genomics are two complementary approaches. Push the button. So, or oh, go down here, kids. All right. Um, so there are uh, several legitimate reasons why we as citizens would also want to grow trees bigger, stronger, and faster. This forest products are still BC's uh, number one export commodity by dollar value. The mountain pine beetle, however, has taken a big chunk out of our interior timber supply, and climate change also poses risks to forest health and productivity and losses due to fire and other insect and disease outbreaks. However, the demand for biofuels and carbon sequestration are on the rise. Uh, there are several large-scale genomics projects underway, funded by Genome BC and Genome Canada, identified here. And um, good to see Pia Smets, project manager for Adapt Tree in the audience. Uh, so those these projects, which are wrapping up, plus the new two, the two new UPT projects, could soon influence how we approach tree breeding and reforestation in British Columbia. But before I introduce these two projects, the two new projects, and the advantages of genomics and forestry, let me quick give you an overview of tree breeding and reforestation in BC. So tree breeding is the process of selecting, mating, and then testing trees and their offspring, called progeny, uh, for desirable traits such as faster growth, uh, form, wood quality, and pest tolerance. And we have breeding programs for all the major commercial tree species, for areas in the province which we have determined it's economically feasible to do so. This work is led by our ministry scientists working in collaboration with forest companies and others in BC, which as you know is 95% of publicly owned land. So the trees that are uh, performed best in these field tests, um, such as the trees on the bottom right, in the right picture, those big pumpkins here, uh, so we select those and then, and then breed those with other selected trees and then we test their progeny again to see um, if their kids have the same genes as their parents. Concurrently, and the arrow down below, um, takes us to, uh, to seed orchards. So those same parents that we selected for those desirable traits, we graft them and we plant them in seed orchards. These are like fruit orchards, except we're growing cones instead of apples and oranges. And, and these seed orchards are there to produce operational quantities of tree seed for the provincial reforestation program. There are over a hundred seed orchards like these, uh, managed by the ministry and private companies, 
that produce air, uh, seed for specific areas and elevations. And each orchard contains at least 20 to 40 genetically unique parents, so we're maintaining high levels of genetic diversity in the seed from them. And the cones on the trees, which can take anywhere from 4 to 16 months to develop, uh, depending on the species, are then collected and then shipped to our provincial tree seed center in Surrey, where they are processed, extracting the seed from the cones, um, and then tested for germination and quality, and then registered and stored in freezers that are minus 18 degrees Celsius. Now, foresters working for companies and the government can go online and enter requests to withdraw the seed from the freezers have it prepped and shipped to private seedling nurseries where they're grown for one or two years. And then, as you can see in the picture, um, the planting occurs. And again, that's done usually by contractors working on behalf of those that have reforestation obligations. There's over 250 million trees planted in BC every year. And as you can appreciate, that takes hundreds and hundreds of kilograms of seed. Uh, at present, about 70% of that seed is collected from orchards I just uh, showed you, and the balance is collected from wild stands. So as you can appreciate, tree, tree breeding and reforestation are long-term endeavors and investments. It can take 7 to 10 years uh, after planting a field trial to identify trees that have got those desirable traits, and then another 7 to 10 years um, to produce seed uh, once those trees have been established in the seed orchards. So it can take 25 to 30 years to go through a complete breeding cycle from initial selection to actually planting a tree uh, out in the woods. So as such, tree improvement programs, traditional tree improvement program, programs, are not uh, well, they don't respond well to rapid changes in the environment or the economy. And this is where genomics can help us. So through genomics, and market assisted selection, we can save considerable time and money by identifying desirable traits sooner. We can eliminate the need for expensive and expansive field testing, and that increases cost effectiveness, um, genetic gain over unit time. We can also use market assisted selection to identify traits that take too long, or they're too expensive, or they're too difficult to assess, particularly traits that only appear in mature trees. And they can also increase the accuracy of our phenotypic selection and uh, pedigree and heritability estimates. Um, and, and confirm who the parents are of that exceptional or that problematic seedling. So, as Gabe says, uh, we were one of the first to be successful uh, for UPP's, for Genome BC's UPP call for proposals. And the first one, has to do with the genetic selection of Douglas fir. And this project is led by Michael Storr, Dr. Michael Storr, our Douglas fir tree breeder and now acting manager of, this, of our section of uh, four scientists, and Dr. Yusriel Kasev at UBC. Now, Douglas fir, as you may know, is one of the most commercially important uh, timber species in British Columbia because its wood is highly valued for density and strength. The Coastal Douglas fir program is also one of our oldest tree improvement programs in the province, with genetic gains of about 25% more volume at rotation compared to planting the forest with tree uh, using seed collected from, from wild stands. This UPP project uh, takes advantage of 35-year-old field tests, so that's a picture of um, the plantation up on the top uh, right there. Those trees are 35 years old, and they've been measured over time for growth and wood quality attributes like density. Now what this project is doing is uh, destruct through destructive sampling and testing and at the same time uh, sequencing the genomes of these trees. We're trying to identify the SNPs or the <coughs> SNPs of genes that are associated with those particular traits. And then when we get some matches then we'll, they're going to go back into some younger plantations to validate if those uh, SNP associations uh, work and then develop a genomic selection prediction model. So, if successful, we can then start selecting our future crops just by sampling the needles of 
one or two year old seedlings not having to wait 20, 30 years. The second proposed uh, project is to enhance the durability and resistance of western red cedar, which is BC's official tree. And this wood, as you may know, is highly valued for its durability and also its beauty. Um, but the rock-resistant hardwood, uh, which is why your cedar shingles and decks don't rot, um, takes at least 30 to 40 years to develop. Um, so then you have to wait a while to get that. Uh, planting trees, uh, cedar trees, or has its challenges, and uh, foliar disease is one, uh, but also subject to browse by ungulates. Um, new seedlings are right out of the uh, nursery and fertilized. They taste pretty good to deer. But what we've, uh, through, through just uh, observation, noticed that trees were they're not uh, eating some trees and preferring others. It turns out that there are variable levels of terpenes, a very bitter terpene being present in cedar. And so John Russell, who is leading this project, um, has been breeding, doing going rapid breeding and, and developing um, uh, varieties or strains of trees that have this high levels of terpenes. Um, and this is really important for our, our partners in the forest companies because they're spending up to five dollars to protect their seedlings from deer browse doing crazy things like spraying cooter pee and, uh, and uh, you know, putting cages around the trees to physically uh, protect, the, protect them. So this project like the other one is using uh, again an older test plantation um, and market assisted a selection to identify these resistant tricks. And so we can do this again much faster uh, using genomics than conventional tree breeding. But both of these projects are, of course, contingent on the support and funding from a number of agencies, including several forest products companies here on the coast, Island Timberlands, Timberwest, Western Forest Products, and Interfor. These companies manage or own forest lands upon which a number of these field trials have been established, and they are very interested in the potential results and benefits of these UPP projects. So if these UPP and the large-scale applied genomics projects are successful in developing and implementing genomic selection prediction models, uh, they could be applied to other species and programs so we can grow trees bigger, stronger, healthier, better adapted to climate change, and faster. And so that's my part. Thanks very much.